Welcome back. There's much to be discovered around here. Let's head towards this question mark. It seems to be a triangle puzzle if I had to guess. Alright. Vertical locomotion. Excuse me? Wait, what? Excuse me? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? What is this exactly? Oh, moving... Moving platforms is a test element, huh? Okay, but the connection is broken and it's still going, right? Strange. Uh oh. Oh, and it's just kind of floating there still. That fan is permanent. Okay. I guess this line shows the direction it would go. <laughs> I, uh,. This really is a time where not doing the puzzles in order kind of is confounding me. Can it go over that, maybe? Okay, I see it. So it stops moving, but continues hovering when it loses a signal. Oh, it can press the button as well. Huh. Really? What was so difficult about this one for it to be a triangle puzzle? Okay then. I know you're all thinking about the goal and the theory of everything. Is the past what we thought it was? Is the future what we want it to be? But the only thing that's real at the end of the day is the present. And right now, what matters is that our friend is lost and needs our help. Yeah, I've got a... I'm not really sure what to say. There's a lot to think about and unpack so far in the game. Like, there's just so many interconnected layers of things to think about and talk about. It's really a lot. This is an oil pump? Find 10 ancient human artifacts. Alright, oil pump, yeah. Our ancestors used machines of this type to extract a substance called petroleum, which had countless industrial applications. Technologies involving petroleum revolutionized human society and greatly increased the human quality of life, but also came with initially discounted side effects, such as the release of greenhouse gases. Yep. What an interesting thing to find so easily. Curious.
They're making us question whether this new technology that Miranda and Athena and Cornelius worked on will have side effects. And really that just means we need to understand how it works and, you know, take precautions, obviously. But they're trying to make us conflate it with stuff like oil, which we have a very negative memory of. The thing is, a lot of companies that were, you know, involved in making stuff that had a lot of negative consequences, they actually knew it long before the public did, and they intentionally hid it. So it's difficult to avoid letting systems and power structures create problems like that. Well, here's our other triangle puzzle. Jailbreak. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Doesn't matter what color goes in it. I mean, that one kind of looks kind of red, right? So I'm guessing blue wouldn't work. Yeah, so it wants red. Okay. Now, curious. I don't think that counts as being on the button. Wow, this has a really big range of wanting to be selected. What happens if we power it now, actually? That's about what I expected, to be honest. We can jump up here ourselves. Interestingly, not sure how helpful that really is, though. Afraid of, to be honest. Although, maybe it's exactly what we want. Oh wait, that's not connected though. Wait, if it is... What's going on here? Oh, I'm looking at the... That, yeah. Yeah, that's what that was for, is to get us thinking the same way here. this work, though? Oh, that's annoying.
Really? Oh, okay. that first. Just a bit further, please. jump through here at all. Ooh, just barely not far enough. Okay. Just a little bit further, please. it to the wrong things. There we go. I think we did it. Kind of. Yeah, that works. Yay! Interface content, huh? The gold mega thread. I recognize that many citizens feel the need to discuss the visions experienced by 1K, which suggests that perhaps certain aspects of what we have hitherto believed about the founder and the goal may be inaccurate. However, given the controversy surrounding the subject matter, I will ask everyone to be particularly careful in how they express themselves. I think we have final and irrevocable, irrevocable proof that we've strayed from Athena's original vision. I agree, but I'd like to submit that even if that wasn't that even if that weren't the case, deliberately engineering an energy proof energy poor future would still be a disastrous and misanthropic idea. How do we know any of this is real? Athena's voice is just Alexander Drennan's. I could switch to the same voice pack right now and record myself to knew that the goal is the truth. Really, I didn't even notice that. Huh. Elvis makes a good point. Objective truth is not a concept that can be applied to the world we live in. Fine, then we can just collectively decide to believe in something else, right? Doesn't even have to be Athena. Let's just believe in Byron's ideas instead. Byron's ideas are a theological fantasy. But if it's all arbitrary, what does, what does that matter? I just don't buy this whole goal thing anymore. Byron was right. Does it matter what Athena believes? Honest question. Let's say the founder is a myth that was constructed around her. In that scenario, what do we owe Athena at the end of the day? Our options are gratitude, loyalty, nothing except what we also owe each other, we should at least take our idea seriously, and apology. Hmm. It's kind of strange how we're just responding to the very last thing that was said. Can't really respond to anything else. In that scenario, okay. That's an important phrase. I 
I mean, these are both kind of the same in a way, right? Oh, good answer, 1k. Decency and empathy is what we need the most in the city. Here, here. It's here, here, you moron. <laughs> Sigh. Or an end of this matter because it's actually aliens. <laughs> Alright. Back to gameplay. Once again, we are limited by waters. Oh, that's the Stromino Bridge. Okay. I'm guessing this is a terminal over here. Yep. What's this, though? It doesn't let us identify it. Sudden music change is a bit strange. Against Decay. From selected archive documents A through C. We live in a decaying system which in turn produces ideologies of decay to justify its existence. No matter what cultural signifiers they get packaged with, these ideologies come down to the same material result. A future in which, for the average person, there is less of everything. To paraphrase Mark Fisher, we find it easier to imagine the decline of civilization than to imagine a civilization worth living in. Those of us who still believe that humanity can thrive, that there is a path forward other than willful or accidental decay, are out of sync with the system. No matter how we phrase our arguments, they will be perceived in terms of whatever cultural signifiers the listener opposes. It's a deeply frustrating, depressing, even infuriating situation. But what can we do except patiently explain and hope conditions change? In other words, what can we do except have faith? Athena says, This was written only a few months before the discovery of the virus. There was no time for conditions to change. Founding 11. Hypatia's journal number 11, volume 1, founded in New Jerusalem, day 882. It's been a while since I last wrote an entry in my journal. Much has changed in New Jerusalem. We've put up a good chunk of the planned living quarters, and the old storage facility has been converted into a movie theater, of all things. So we still argue a lot, but now it's mostly about which film we'll be watching next. Other construction efforts are going well too, although we've begun to run out of readily accessible resources. Our scavenging expeditions are ranging further and further afield with each passing month, and the sights that they have reported on sound truly marvelous. One day I might want to go see for myself. It's a good thing, in that regard, that, that we'll getting New two new citizens soon. That's gotta be a typo of some sort. It's a good thing in that regard that we'll be getting two new citizens soon, because everyone is as busy as ever. More hands to help us build our future. I can't wait to meet them. I think the music was really good for a moment there. How is this supposed to work? The system is meant to last centuries. Centuries! And yeah, Chernyshevsky's plan... Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. But I'm working with hardware that was deliberately designed to fail. Planned obsolescence, baby. Selling broken garbage just to make another buck. A buck you can't even spend because in a few more weeks, we'll be extinct. Was it worth it? That's the part that Alexandra doesn't see. The greed, the stupidity, the selfishness, the way that we created this whole situation in the first place. She wants you to be like us, but if you ask me, there's a whole lot of human history and behavior you can just throw away, chuck it in the trash, right? Yep. You have a chance at a fresh start. Make the best of it. Yeah, pretty much. You know, when I decided that we should call ourselves human, 
I did that because it seemed like a powerful symbol of our continuity. But the truth is, and I'm ashamed to admit this, I thought we were better than them. I thought we understood the value of civilization, and we wouldn't repeat the same mistakes. But the simulation worked too well. We're not just like them. We are them. We really are. But that doesn't have to be a bad thing, Athena. We may have the same flaws, but we also have all the potential they did. Everything that Alexandra Drennan saw in them is also in us. I hope you're right. I really do. Uh, you okay there, Herman? But yeah, I guess that addresses some of what I was talking about with uh, them calling themselves human and how human-like they are despite not having to be that way. What do you know? again. <laughs> This is puzzle six. Now oh, what's over here? That's a pretty nature, that's for sure. Let's go pick up the star, and then we'll start doing the other puzzles, I suppose. And then we'll try and figure out where the Prometheus spark is.
Oh, there's this question mark up here. This is a terminal. From Arena... Arenia to Athena. Athena, I know that we didn't have the greatest relationship, and I frequently antagonized you. The truth is I resented you. Resented this mythology of the Founder. I thought you had created it deliberately, as a way of controlling us. I wanted so badly to be free, and you seemed to stand in the way of that. Only after you left, and the cult of personality grew even wider, wilder, did I realize it was actually a burden and an impediment to you. When they turned your myth into the opposite of everything you actually believed, started tearing down your dreams in your own name, I realized I'd wronged you, and now I'm less free than ever. I feel the walls crushing me. I don't know where you are or what you're doing. I don't know if coming back would fix things, but I'm sorry. Atlas 1. Atlas and Ladon. The Atlas Variations by Athanasius. Uh, Athen... Athanasios. There we go. After a billion years, when Atlas had grown old and tired of holding up the world, he was faced with a dilemma. Heracles, the son of Zeus, was on his way to the Garden of the Hesperides to claim the Golden Apples, which were guarded by the dragon Ladon. Zeus came to Atlas and promised that if Atlas helped Heracles say, slay the dragon, Zeus would free Atlas from his burden. But Atlas, seeing the beauty and innocence of Ladon, beloved of the Hesperides, could not slay the beast. Instead, he stole the apples and gave them to Heracles, and so he was condemned to bear the weight of the cosmos for another billion years. But though Atlas grieved for his freedom, he was comforted by watching Ladon flourish in the verdant garden. What was this one called? Will they fragment? Joy and beauty from the soul of man. Sympathy with pain there will, of course, always be. It is one of the first instincts of man. The animals which are individual, the higher animals, that is to say, share it with us. But it must be remembered that while sympathy with joy intensifies the sum of joy in the world, sympathy with pain does not really diminish the amount of pain. It may make man better able to endure evil, but the evil remains. Sympathy with consumption does not cure consumption. That is what science does. Christ made no attempt to reconstruct society, and consequently, the individualism that he preached to man could, not be, could be realized only through pain or in solitude. The ideals that we owe to Christ are the ideals of the man who abandons society entirely, or of the man who resists society absolutely. But man is naturally social. Even the Sabaid became peoples at last. And though the Cenobite realizes his personality, is often an impoverished personality that he so realizes. Shallow speakers and shallow thinkers in pulpits and on platforms often talk about the world's worship of pleasure and whine against it, but it is rarely in the world's history that its ideal has been one of joy and beauty. Athena says, when you tell people that a society could be built on the ideals of joy and beauty, they think you're a utopian fantasist. If you tell them society will always be built on exploitation and greed, they think you're wise and so they make the outcome inevitable. Cornelius says, Formative cynicism has always been the hallmark of adolescence. Athena says, But there has... But has there ever been a society of adults? Can there ever be one? Why is this childness so extremely powerful, or childishness so extremely powerful, more powerful than joy and beauty? Yeah, good questions. Can we talk for a second? I'm still struggling. I was really hoping we'd find Miranda alive. Her way of seeing the world was so inspiring. And the idea that I can never get to know her, that she's gone. I guess I've never really been good at dealing with death. Maybe because it's so rare in New Jerusalem. Except for pets, and even in that case, I find it very hard to deal with. I still miss my first cat, and it's been over a century since she died.
when someone dies, it's this void. I know I should just let it go, but some part of me refuses. And I feel like that part, it hurts me, but it also keeps me human. And I know, I know it would be healthier if I said, okay, Miranda is someone I never met. She's just a bunch of glitchy old files. But if I do that, as rational as it seems, it feels like I'm surrendering something, something that matters. Yeah, this game has a lot of parts of subtitles that don't exactly match what's being said, or even have typos in them. Strange. All right, our options are then don't let go, use the pain as a foundation to build something. You can let go of pain, but still care about the person. You have to let go, you're still alive, you have to let go, this doesn't help anyone. Hmm. Well, I'm no therapist. But if it motivates you, then I'd say use that motivation in, in a good way. Interesting. I hadn't thought of pain as something you can use. If I can take the pain and use it, use it to create something or to do something, Maybe that's a way of not surrendering to death. Thanks, 1K. I'm really gonna think about that. Of course, go ahead. On the one hand, there's so much we could do with the theory of everything. So many lives I could live. I have enough ideas for the next, I don't know, 20,000 years, easily. And that's just from five minutes of thinking about it. On the other hand, Miranda's gone. So much hope, so much grief. I don't know how to, how to balance that. In the ancient year 1969, a band called Mellow Macarin wrote a psychedelic rock song about the Talos Principle. It's called Cretan Bronze Man's Flying Mystery Adventure. <laughs> I don't know if it's nice, but it's definitely the most understandable song on the album. There's another one which is called The Fish People Will Teach You How to Sing, Mr. Allen which is 20 minutes long and was recorded underwater. <laughs> I think you need psychedelics to enjoy it, really. Maybe if you stick your head inside a really large magnet. <laughs> oh. Right, where should we head to next? Compass, compass, compass. There's a question mark in that direction. All oh, right, I need to pick this up. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> in times of war, is it wisdom or folly to give a sword to a child? The reason I have always admired Alexandra Trennan is that even in death, she fought to see the world as it is, not as she wanted to see it. I say fought because I believe this is not an easy matter. It is a mental and spiritual struggle that we must undertake with great seriousness, even when we are choking. The ancients believed that for most of us, the world is a shadow cast by a flame dimly seen on the wall of a cave. Our task is not to interpret these shapes, but to free ourselves from the cave itself.
Alright. Puzzle number one, Serpiter. Alright, so this is where we get introduced to these. A knot gate? Is that the first time we've seen one of these? I think so. has a really big radius. Look at that. I have to move my pointer all the way over here before it stops trying to connect to that. Look at that. That is such a big radius for clicking on that. Why is it so big? Go, will it stop here or no? Okay, so it turns around there. to do. Bootstrapping! My favorite thing in puzzle games. If what Prometheus revealed about the theory of everything is true, then it explains a lot of the patterns I've been finding. Almost every artificial structure on this island was printed into existence in some kind of energy-to-matter process, or maybe by different versions of that process, some earlier and less effective. And I can only assume that the megastructure itself was created by bootstrapping, having one machine make a bigger one. Which probably means you could create a relatively small device that turns itself into a complete megastructure. Or you can make a machine that just deploys more and more of itself and builds something. A city in a box. Depends on the power source, I guess. Yes, the power source is the biggest question at this point. Alright, where to next? I don't know why everybody's just standing around. Maybe I think they're supposed to be walking around or something, but I don't know. Here we go. Puzzle number two is called Supportive Apparatus. Hmm. Interesting. Also interesting. you. <laughs> I 
how do we even begin in this one? Ah, oh, I see, okay. That's enough for now. Nothing in there anymore? Alright. So we could jump in there if we wanted, but that wouldn't really do us much good, I don't think. Unless... Do we jump back onto here? I don't think so, right? I thought sometimes we could do weird things, but we need another box for that. Yeah, okay. So this doesn't really help us yet. Unless we just want to connect this in advance. Maybe. We oh, yeah, need to move that a bit more, I think. Just in case, you know. Hmm. Not sure what we actually need the connector for, though. Maybe this is gonna not reach somehow? Oh, right, right. Oh! Oh, that works too. Okay. Sure. Alright, we need one to be able to move because it won't go from directly on top of it. What an interesting design decision. Still not high enough. Huh. Let's do some experiments here. Yeah, it won't let me stand up here, and if I try and force it, it won't let me jump. And also won't let me put the connector down anywhere on here. Alright. Well, then what do we do? Yeah, just barely not high enough. And this is even worse, right? Yeah. Hmm. Maybe it's a diversion. Yo, yep. <laughs> it's a diversion. Or no, not quite. Is this one lower, or better angle, perhaps? I guess we just need a box over there too, right? Oh yeah, I just need a box over here, right? I'm I'm doing this wrong. Ah, uh, well, we know what to do now. Yeah, that works. Please go all the way back from whence you came. Thank you. Alright, 
Come with me, Box. We're going over this fence finally. Yep, I could have done that a while back. <laughs> yep, there we go. Tell me, Yakut, what impact do you think the megastructure will have on the future of this island? It depends on what we do with it. Miranda used it to spread life, to make things better. We can do the same. And yet, poor Miranda lost her own life doing so. She just made a mistake. She couldn't wait to show everyone what they discovered. We can be more careful. Yep. I like this music. I think this might be one of my favorite songs, just for that one segment that happened. How curious. Yep, and the angle just barely doesn't work out. <laughs> you want red, okay. I can give you red. I can't even aim at it, really. Hmm. So evidently, this guy cannot go in there because... I have no way to aim it in there. What's this one called again? Automatic doors. Puzzle three. Hmm. Okay, yeah, this makes more sense. Well done, 1K. I like that one. What can I do for you? Lots of things I don't want to ask right now. <laughs> okay, that's the triangle puzzle. All right. This is a nice song as well. Surfing.
I'm uh, not sure I understand. Is there anything in a health in here? Nope. All right. Never need to come back in here then. And what does this do? Is it an AND gate? Do I need both of these? How far does this go? Just on the button and back? Yeah, okay. Hmm. Okay, so it is an AND gate. It's just not specifically signage that way. Oops. I forgot about that one little detail. I'm not used to the single disconnect. So I can do this and I right click. Like I know how to do that, it's just I keep forgetting. I'm not used to it. Surfing, huh? Well, I need that. Put this up here, we won't be able to get it back down, I don't think. Oh... I need the box! Oh no! <laughs> and I can't take it. Alright, at least we have that as an option. Uh... Excuse me? Uh, sure. That doesn't matter. Alright, let's try this again. So it is still high enough to hit that one. Good, good, good. So now we just use the box, as before. There we go. Now we're done. Oh, wait. No, we're not. <laughs> um... The box can't go here, because that angle doesn't work. But I don't need that angle. Uh, <laughs> wow. There we go. Alright. Where to next? Excuse me. I was looking at your research log, and I was rather perplexed by the latest upload. Oh, Melville strikes again. Is that your foot, Melville? Yes. Do you want to say it up close? 
Although you won't be able to fully enjoy it as you don't have a rear camera. Sorry, <laughs> Mayor. Melville just has a unique way of taking pictures. Next time you're getting an upgrade, you coot. I'm installing a mute button. <laughs> I'm still not sure exactly what the humorous aspect of this is supposed to be. Like, it doesn't really make sense for them as robots to have such trouble taking pictures like this. I don't know. It's a weird gag, in my opinion. Milestones by Melville. These things must be connected to the Noima system. Maybe I should dig one up, see how it works. On Sincerity by Alcatraz. I managed to extract the following text string. I'm always struck by the degree to which our ancestors, in the years before the end, struggled with sincerity. They became poisoned with irony, unable to parse any information through anything except a thick layer of alienation. This left so little space for any kind of intellectual authenticity that they seemed to exist in a state of permanent agony. Ironically, that in turn made them extremely susceptible to the few sanctioned forms of sincerity, which acted as a means of social control. This is a very interesting paragraph because I literally just watched a video about, about Puss in Boots that talked about this exact same subject here. <laughs> about even, you know, without the layers of irony and all that. Yeah, Poison with Irony. That, that's literally some of the same phrases that were used in that video I was watching about the Puss in Boots movie. Interesting. Very interesting. Then there's a gap followed by... There's something equally damaged in our own estrangement from our humanity. We mimic the forms and behaviors of our human ancestors, but we don't act like proud inheritors of the human condition. Everything we do gets filtered through this perpetual awareness of their, of their shortcomings, to the degree that we act as if our existence was one of their failures. Author unknown. Whoever it is, I understand what they mean, but disagree with their conclusion. This perpetual awareness isn't a form of alienation, it's a way of learning from the mistakes of our species, unpleasant but necessary. Maybe. <laughs> Alright. Well. Thank you for watching. I will see you all in another episode. Goodbye.